You are watching McLaren Port here on Today's Health and I'm speaking with primary care physician, Dr. Reed Stromberg, about some common health issues that we're seeing in certain age groups and populations. Dr. Stromberg, in this segment, we're gonna be talking about our Generation Z, but in really focusing on people maybe mid teens, like maybe 13, 14, up to age 23. So what are the common things that you're seeing in this age group? So there's quite a few of them. Usually we're looking for that their uh, weight is uh, normal, that they're getting frequent exercise if possible, that they're able to pay attention in school, not have any signs of attention deficit disorder, um, that their immunizations are up to date, including uh, flu shots, tetanus shots, uh, Gardasil would also be a catch-up vaccine at this age. Uh, and then more of the 18-year-olds, meningitis vaccine. And so this is really a, how often do you see this age group? Is this a, maybe a once a year wellness check as well? Yeah, typically uh, we recommend a yearly well child check. And I think a lot of, when I think of this age group, I think of the kids that are maybe transitioning from a pediatrician then to a family practice office. Is that about the age that you s start to see kids transition? Yeah, frequently. Um, you know, we do see newborns as uh, family physicians. Uh, zero to 110 um, is common for us, uh, but uh, some people do start with a pediatrician and they stop seeing patients at 18. Now, I do have my associates that are internists that start seeing patients at 18. Uh, and of course, our obstetrician gynecologists that see uh, all women from 18 and on typically. Uh, occasionally, they'll see the younger women as well. And as a family doctor, I kind of fit between the pediatrician and the internist, uh, kind of mashed together in our educational experience. Very good. I think as a mom myself, and now my, my, my daughters are older, um, there's a time when you don't really need to go to the doctor as often. And I was even guilty of that myself. Um, and then I think having that college-bound age student, how important it is for them to have a relationship then with their primary care doctor. Yeah, very much so. I mean, we all live busy lives in this country, so sometimes it's not on the top of our mind, especially with the healthy. A lot of times we'll see them for colds, flus, and uh, joint pain issues. We'll remind them, hey, you know, we'd really love to see you back for a well child check. Yeah. So with, with this age group, are you seeing other conditions, maybe some um, issues with depression or anxiety? So depression and anxiety is common through all the ages, uh, but certainly it does typically start at this age we see them uh, for that. Um, there are some medical reasons that uh, people may or may not be treated if they're under 18 for depression. Um, there's been some studies that shows increased risk of harming self because of their emotional immaturity. Unfortunately, uh, people don't mature emotionally until about 26. So their emotions tend to be higher highs and lower lows in this age group. So really important then to have that, someone you feel that you can talk to and have that relationship with a doctor to be able to address those very real and serious concerns. Yeah, very much so. Uh, typically, treatment for anxiety and depression can include medications, but studies have shown that counseling uh, with a licensed counselor, psychologist, or psychiatrist is equal to medication. And if people need both, one and one does equal three in this case. Very good. We talked a little bit about some um, vaccines that are important for this age group, and you mentioned Gardasil. So I wanted to talk about, like, for, for our females in this age group, when do you start doing, uh, like, pap smears? And can you talk a little bit about more about Gardasil? Of course. Uh, pap pelvic exams are typically at uh, the onset of sexual activity. So if they're not sexually active, there's typically no risk for HPV, um, which is the... Uh, cause of human papillomavirus and the cause of cervical cancer. In fact, Gardasil is the only vaccine preventable cancer that we know of. Can you talk just a little bit about uh, the counseling that you do with STDs in this age group then too? Yeah, certainly. I mean, uh, some people do start sexual activity at younger ages. Uh, we recommend that if you're sexually active and you're younger, that you be screened for sexually transmitted diseases. Uh, at some point. A lot of times it can be done with a simple urine test. Very good. And what are the other vaccines then that, are, that you uh, look at at the age group? So meningitis A and B, uh, that their tetanus booster is up to date, a yearly flu shot for everyone is always recommended. Great. And the meningitis is really one that's come up for like our college bound age students. Is that correct? Yes, 100%. Uh, unfortunately, meningitis is a very fast acting disease and the uh, vaccine could prevent that. You know, someone can be fine and 24 hours later be deceased. 
Dr. Stromberg, thank you so much for sharing this information with our audience. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching this episode of McLaren Report here on Today's Health. If you would like more information or to schedule an appointment, go to our website at www.mclaren.org forward slash PH Family Doctor. To watch additional videos, visit our website at mclaren.org forward slash PH Videos. This is Kelly DiNardo reporting for McLaren Report here on Today's Health.